We'll call this meeting of the Salem City Council for August 28th to order. If the recorder would please call the roll. Yes, uh, Councillor Kayser. Present. Councillor Anderson. Also. Councillor Nanke. Here. Councillor McCoy. Here. Councillor Ossett. Here. Councillor Hoy. Here. Councillor Cook. Here. Councillor Lewis. Here. And Mayor Bennett. Here. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilor McCoy, do we have additions? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the additions to the agenda. And that addition is um, there's an uh, added or revised agreement with Salem on Ice LLC and some written testimony on that issue that's been included. Okay, great. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. And we have an opportunity now for the council and city manager to comment. Councilors, anyone? Councilor Anderson. Thank you. I have uh, two comments to make, and both are kind of directed toward public safety. The first one is I want to say to the staff from the city manager on down that you did a fantastic job with the eclipse. Um, I have to tell you that I pushed back a little bit at, uh, several months ago, and I could see the city manager is nodding his head about how this decision should have been handled and what should have been done. But um, this may be the first time I'll ever say this, but he was right and I was wrong. Uh, the staff did a terrific job. Uh, we live next to Bush's Pasture Park, and we were down there um, the morning of the eclipse, and it was wonderful. Um, and I'm sure it was that way all through the city. I'll also tell you that I organized, and I think I announced this at the last council meeting, I organized a cleanup of Bush's Park on uh, Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Anybody could come down and join me, and about a half dozen people came, and there was absolutely nothing to do because by, by the day after at 9, the park was cleaned up. It looked terrific. So kudos to everyone in the city staff. Uh, terrific job of all. I see Mark Bechtel here, the city manager, there's Chief Moore, everybody else who was here. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. The other thing is of a public safety nature and that uh, I went down uh, to the Willamette today at noontime for a swim. And uh, I'm getting in the water and I see the uh, board with, I don't know, maybe 20 uh, life vests there of all different kinds. and. Um, as I was looking at it, about four, four boys, maybe 10 to 12 years old, rode up on their bikes. They should have been wearing helmets and they weren't, but that's another story. They rode up on their bikes and they all went directly to the um, life station or the, the life fest station and put them on and went down to the river. And they, when I got out uh, from finished my swim, they were still there playing by the river and they had their vest on. So. Thank you to the city staff that did that, and I think that's an important thing. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, ask everybody a quick question. Do you know your blood type? Yes. If you do, just remember the Red Cross is in a situation right now, not just with our friends uh, in Houston, but we're coming up on more seasons of storms. Uh, the blood flow within the nation works just like a circulatory system in your body when one area is short we step in even though salem's a long ways away from things that are happening in houston or in other areas you can help um, i donated before session today i had my first power red donation very exciting very strange and fun so uh, i just encourage you all uh, it means that my blood is so special i get extra credit in that particular circumstance. Uh, I'm an I'm a O like negative. A two for one, or how's that work? It means they, they take your platelets and also the plasma, yeah. and that has a longer shelf life. So blood only lasts uh, around a week, and then they need to refresh the supply. Um, I just encourage you to visit your friendly vampire and, uh, and donate if you've got the time. Councilor Nagy. 
Thank you. Uh, o positive. So not, <laughs> not uh, as special. Um, and it, the seasonal thing is the same as well. People are busy in the summer, and so their suppliers uh, tend to be fewer and further between as well. Um, that being said, on Friday, I got to uh, come down to City Hall and meet with uh, three administrators and about 22 of uh, our students from Kawagoi, our sister city. It was a fun time. Actually, I think I saw both Councilors Kayser and Cook in the, uh, the office as we were talking and then came over here, got some good photos. They were all very impressed uh, with how big um, <laughs> Salem is and, and the U.S. in general as compared to uh, the island and just how nice people were and, and how uh, much nature there is around. So uh, they were all spoke very highly of it, although a lot of them were timid and didn't want to speak at all. So um, it was good to, to get that opportunity to meet them and hopefully get to meet them on the other side of the Big Island. Uh, I want to, uh, I've had several things come up. Uh, I want to really second the remarks of uh, Councillor Anderson and compliment our staff. I have gotten compliments from all over the world on the way Salem handled the eclipse. People are absolutely thrilled and surprised and couldn't help but comment this would never happen in our town. So I tried to get find out where their towns were so as not to... <laughs> Uh, it, I, I just think it's something that really uh, it was very special. Uh, Mr. Bechtel, in particular, I want to compliment you and your staff for the work you did in the parks. Uh, there certainly was just a little bit, just enough naysayers to make it make us all a little nervous, and I think we all came out of it just absolutely thrilled with the work that was done. So thank you very, very much for your work for this community. You've made a real positive uh, impact on the uh, I think the perception of Salem, both in the state and nationally, as a result of this, and it, in some cases internationally, it really uh, got a lot of coverage. Uh, so I, I thought that was great. Uh, this yesterday, I attended uh, the 70th anniversary celebration by the Indus Society of the independence of India, the largest democracy in the world, or most populous democracy in the world. And uh, that was a really great event over at Bush's Pasture Park. Last night had dinner with students from Kawagoe. Again, uh, another opportunity for us to remember what a welcoming city we are. And in the spirit of welcoming, I am really excited, I hope you all are too, that we are welcoming a million square foot Amazon Corporation uh, Fulfillment Center at Mill Creek Industrial Park and a thousand new jobs in this community. It's an amazing thing that's happened to us. And I, I, for all of you who knew who it was over the past couple of months and didn't tell anybody, I, I know how difficult it was to kind of all of us, for all of us to be very uh, discreet about this. Uh, it was one of the things that everyone expected. I did ask uh, Annie Gorski to be here if any of you had any questions on this project at all, if you had anything you wanted to. But uh, congratulations to our community <laughs> development, uh, our urban development department, as well as SEDCOR and the state of Oregon, which really played a tremendous role in this coming together. Councilor Nick. Just in, in regard to timing, there was nothing on the press release or uh, uh, any of the material I saw as far as when they plan on actually being in operation. So Andy Gorski, economic development manager for the city. Um, my understanding is they plan to open sometime late next year. So um, I also want to give kudos to um, planning and to Public Works because those departments really worked hard to make the schedule happen for the company. They had a pre-application conference with us in April and they were grading uh, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, uh, five months, really. Yes, I've had From the time they had the initial conversation with the city. Is. Yeah. yeah from that initial conversation with the city to the time they started grading was five months. That's incredible. So, Just thank excellent. you. Excellent. Big thanks to everybody yeah. who, who helped on that. Okay, anyone else? Councilor Hoy. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to thank you for allowing me to attend the 55th anniversary celebration at Providence Place out on Fisher Road. Uh, it was a celebration for the Retirement Housing Foundation, and they provide affordable housing for seniors throughout the country. And I was able to read a proclamation on your behalf and celebrate their 55th anniversary out on, on uh, Fisher Road. 67 units, I believe, are out there, all affordable housing for seniors. It was a really great event, so thank you. Great. Thank you very much for doing that. Okay, everybody, thank you, everybody. Ready to go? Okay, great, thank you very much. Well, we're gonna have a presentation by Glenn Davis. And then I'll do proclamations, Glenn, I'm sorry. Come on on, go ahead. Here's your, do you want this? Okay, well, you can hold I it up there. Glenn. So good. Good evening, Mayor Bennett and city councilors. My name is Glenn Davis. I'm the Salem floodplain administrator. Um, and I have the privilege tonight of celebrating a significant achievement in Salem's floodplain management program. This achievement can be credited to the great work of a number of city staff and citizens who have made this program a high priority. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks to, uh, to Robin Dahlke in Public Works, for, who dedicates most of her time, much of her time, to this complex program. Um, tonight, uh, the City of Salem is acknowledging we've attained a Class 5 ranking in the Community Rating System, um, abbreviated CRS. Uh, the Class 5 CRS ranking means every citizen in Salem who purchases flood insurance receives a 25% discount below the standard rate. And I'll point out standard rates are set um, at the federal level. and have been the subject of national news, um, especially after could, uh, disasters like Katrina and Sandy and then now Harvey. So for background, Salem joined the CRS system in 2008 with a 10% discount. And we've improved our program over the last nine years. In 2012, we reached a 20% discount. And then now uh, we've reached a 25% discount this last year. The 25% discount means a total savings of $300,000 to a flood insurance premium citywide. So most of the policyholders have flood insurance not because they've chosen to buy it, but because federal requirements make it mandatory. So these discounts are especially meaningful because we're helping people who simply can't shop around for the best price. They're forced to buy flood insurance and pay the fixed rates set at the national level. So on a personal note, I will add that Salem is currently the only class five community in Oregon. In other words, Salem's floodplain management program is now number one in Oregon. Um, and not just looking back, but looking forward, uh, we're looking for ways to get even better. We have a plan to get to CRS class four, which is a 30% discount. Um, as you'd expect, improvements to the program are harder and harder as we get better and better. But we still have room to improve, and we may see higher discounts in the, in the future. So I'm privileged to be uh, part of such a great team of professionals uh, who have made this achievement possible. And so now I give the floor over to uh, Mr. Powers uh, for the uh, presentation. Uh, Glenn, if you'd like to come up and get this plaque suitable for building. <laughs> or dam and water. There you go. Thank you. Show it off. And then I'll share with you uh, also this letter I received from FEMA uh, thanking you, well, really uh, incredible amount of praise for the work our department's done here. So if you'd like to have this as well with it, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. And we have one proclamation this evening, and accepting that proclamation is Ken Hetzel, board member of Recovery Outreach Community Center. Ken is one of the attending members of all the groups involved in the planning of Hands Across the Bridge, which is scheduled for Friday, September 8th, from 2 to 7 p.m. at Marion Square Park. Uh, this is a celebration of recovery, and if there's any other peer support uh, specialists in the audience, please join Ken and we'll present this, uh, this proclamation. You bet, Ken. 
Let me uh, read this uh, for the audience. Whereas the impact of mental health and substance abuse, substance use disorders affect all communities, and whereas uh, behavioral health is essential to overall health, and recovery is a process through which individuals are able to improve their wellness, live increasingly self-directed lives, and strive to fulfill their greatest potential. And whereas by seeking support, people who experience mental health and or substance use disorders can embark on a healthier lifestyle, and whereas the National Recovery Month promotes the societal benefits of prevention, treatment, and recovery for mental and substance use disorders, celebrates people in recovery, recognizes the contributions of treatment and service providers, and promotes the message that recovery in all its forms is possible, And whereas through National Recovery Month, the community has an opportunity to become more able to recognize the signs of mental health and or substance use disorders as well as support the service providers who give their unwavering support to those in need. Now therefore I, Chuck Bennett, Mayor of the City of Salem, do hereby proclaim September 2017 as National Recovery Month and invite the community to join me in observing this month with compelling programs and events that support this year's observance, dated this 28th day of August, 2017. So thank you very much, Ken. Okay, okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. They're all consumers. Excellent. Bad. Thank you for being here this evening. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. And Ken's going to talk uh, under public comment. So good. Thank you. Ken. In fact, Ken, why don't we just have you come up right now? Uh, we're going to begin our public comment. I want to remind the audience uh, we allow uh, three minutes for public comment. Uh, the light system is when it turns orange, you have one minute left. When it turns red, just stop talking. So I don't have to interrupt you. That's, I always feel guilty when I have to interrupt you, but that's the job and I signed up for it. So uh, if you'll stay with me on that, I'd appreciate it. Mr. Hetzel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and, and City Councilman. I was reading the NAMI newsletter that came out today, and I found this very interesting. I'll, I'll give credit to Tim Murphy of Ridgeway. They have an event uh, later this month, and I thought it was very appropriate. September is National Recovery Month, and that means it's time for Ridgeway Recovery Services to hold our fourth annual run for recovery. This year, the event will take place on Saturday, September 30th at Riverfront Park in Salem. We hold our 5K and 10K walk run every year to bring awareness to addiction and mental health issues, reduce the stigma, attach them, attach to them, and unite the community. But it's this pesky stigma that we need to talk about. When someone breaks their arm, they go to the doctor. When somebody needs their wisdom tooth pulled, and I had five or seven, excuse me, pulled at the veteran's stand down last week, uh, wisdom teeth pulled, they go to the dentist. This is considered normal and no one blames them for needing help. So why isn't this the case for depression, alcohol addiction? problem gambling. Often people don't seek help for those problems because they are afraid of the social rep repercussions that usually follow stigma, shame, and blame. At Bridgeway, we believe that seeing treatment for chemical dependence should be as accepted as going to the dentist, a mental health appointment, 
should be as routine as a trip to the bank and getting help for problem gambling should be as encouraged as getting help for asthma. That's why we work hard every day to challenge the stigma attached to these problems. We challenge this stigma by normalizing treatment and talking about it, hosting the run for recovery, displaying a booth at the Salem Saturday Market, embedding our treatment facilities within the community are just a few ways we make discussing and accessing treatment a socially acceptable endeavor. Mental health issues are common. Addictions is common. But so is recovery. People overcome these challenges to lead productive and fulfilling lives. We see it every day. And then they have a registration there. But my story is I got sick in 1994, went to the- Ken, I'm sorry, the time's okay, up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clay Peterson. Oops, I'm sorry. Chris, go ahead. Ken? Ken? Got a question. I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you for coming down and, and raising this really important issue. This is uh, mental health and addiction is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I have my mother uh, lived with a significant mental illness uh, my entire life until she passed away when I was 18. And I appreciate the fact that um, that you're that we're able to talk about it publicly now that we weren't in a way we weren't able to back then. I remember when I was a freshman at Willamette, I, I used to sneak away from Willamette and go over to the state hospital and visit her because I, I was so ashamed. And uh, you know that was in the early 80s, but uh, I'm really glad to say that things have changed since then and, we, and I'm able to talk about it publicly and not feel any sense of shame whatsoever and I wouldn't have been able to do that a long time ago. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Ken. <coughs> now, Clay Peterson. Hello, I'm Clay Peterson. I came with Ken and uh, am also part of the Hands Across the Bridge Planning Committee. And I just wanted to come and make sure that everybody, thank you so much for the proclamation. That's Certainly. really huge. And uh, it'll make, well, it'll be definitely be something that we talk about during the Hands Across the Bridge Festival. Hands Across the Bridge happens every year here in Marion Square Park. Marion Square Park, we do it there because that is where um, it's right next to UGM and other places and also right next to the bridge and it's just really important that I think that we really put a lot of value in that park because um, I know in previous years we've had issues with the bathrooms and things being broken and um, I know that we're one of the only groups I believe in the entire year that rents that park out and uses it but um, you know it's just like a really powerful park to have um, an event about recovery in because it's a park that a lot of people that um, are either really early in recovery or maybe not quite in recovery yet, use every day. So um, I just think that it's really great that um, we're able to rent it and use it and would like to just encourage everybody to um, try to make sure that it's as usable as possible because last year um, we were notified just days before that the bathrooms weren't available and we had to figure out a way to get a porta potty there, um, which the city actually offered to pay for, but um, that took a little bit of uh, coming back and saying, whoa, we didn't know we had to get a porta potty because you said that the bathroom was going to be available. Um, so thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, this year we have that all figured out in advance. But um, then the other thing about that is just that Hands Across the Bridge this year is going to be September 8th. So that's just in, uh, it's a week from Friday. And I would love to see any of you there if you can come. Um, it would be really great to see uh, council people or just anyone in the audience because it's a really powerful event at the at about 5 p.m. we're going to line up to go and line up over the bridge where people will throw flowers into the um, river uh, Marion County has paid for a drone to come and get a video of this happening and we've done this every year for this will be the 11th year of doing it so Definitely um, try to come. There'll be booths, there'll be games, there'll be fun, um, there'll be food. So um, come by. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Clay, very much. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for putting on the, being involved and in putting on the program. It's really a great, great thing. It's really, it's a great thing to be a part of. Good. Thank you. Uh, 
Debbie Feng. Ferry. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hi, I'm Debbie Ferry, and um, I have a handout um, that I brought for you so that you have something to, to look at. Um, I'm coming to you today with a proposal to somehow acquire the intersection at 24th and Trade. 24th and Trade is um, on Mill Creek, and it most people drive on by it because it is a big weed covered, ivy covered, dead tree uh, area. And um, I'm being vague because I talked to Cliff Dahmer this morning. I'm saying that, hopefully I'm saying that right. And he had all kinds of names for this and actually it's not even defined. It's this chunk of ground that abuts my property and I would like to work with the city to acquire it. So um, on my handout, I have um, provided you why. Um, and it has been a, I've lived at this property for 20 years. I am, I put there that I, I'm one of those people that has mandatory flood insurance and I'm a survivor of the January 19th, 2012 flood, which will day that I will never ever forget. It's a whole nother story. So um, this piece of property, I call it the triangle and it's on my map is the little red triangle. Um, that triangle is probably way bigger than it actually is, but it's this piece of property um, that I would like to take over, acquire, however you want to call it. So I've, pr I've provided you four pictures of this property um, and um, what it looks like today. On page two is what you see when you whip around the corner from 24th and jump onto trade. You blink your eyes and you've just passed it. Um, that is what the triangle looks like when you're standing in my backyard. It's the second picture. The third picture is what you're looking at when you're looking at the fence. That's the road barrier. And then the other one is that's a real close up and that's the quote, yellow fire hydrant. Um, this is a very small piece of property. There is a lot of drug activity. In fact, even today um, from the dispatch, I wanna say court enforced, but I don't think that was the group came out picked up a needle on the side of the road, very common to find needles back here in this ivy, and also picked up a bucket of motor oil that was dumped back there. Um, I, because I abut this property, um, take care of this triangle, and um, it's been 20 years of taking care of the triangle, and I would like to permanently call it mine. And so that's why I'm here tonight, and um, to see how we can work to get the triangle to me so that I can clean it up, take care of it, and prevent what's happening uh, with it right now. Great, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay, and you're talking with Cliff, is that correct? Cliff, and Cliff was going to talk to, I think, the Director of Public Works today. Yes, okay. so yes, I will be following up with well, You're on Cliff. the right route. You're on the right. Uh, follow up with Cliff on next steps. See okay. what's possible. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Damon Talbot. Good evening, Damon Talbot, Ward 5 again. And this time, uh, Councilor Anderson and both Mayor Bennett did steal some of my thunder. Um, but again, I want to speak about the eclipse and uh, just give an update how that went from my experience. Um, I stayed at Riverfront Park starting Saturday. Mayor Bennett came and saw me on Sunday. He got to meet some of the people that were from out of town, staying there as part of our arrangements that we made with some people. And it was a wonderful experience, not just the totality and the eclipse itself, but that entire weekend. Um, a lot of the people that came didn't bring their own food or anything, so that meant they were going into downtown and going to dinner at restaurants, at bars. They uh, were shopping here in Salem, spending some money. As Councilor Anderson noticed, uh, the parks were cleaner probably that you know Monday afternoon than they had been in months, because literally a lot, most of the people that had came and stayed there spent an hour or two after the eclipse helping clean. So that was a wonderful experience. In the little north section of Riverfront Park where I was, we had seven different countries represented and seven different states. So uh, it was a very large group there. Um, and just all over, it was a wonderful experience. So I wanted to uh, be sure that 
I had promised everyone that was there at that part of the park that I would come and uh, let the city know thank you for opening the parks to them so they could come experience the eclipse here and they would not have known where to go and how to see it otherwise. So they just wanted me to express that to the council and to the mayor and to the city staff for making that happen and it was well worth it. And they were very, very thrilled. And as Mr. Anderson said, you know, they were very happy to clean up and do the right thing and spend money in town. It was uh, everything we had hoped and maybe even more. So this time, are there questions? I walked away last time. So. <laughs> Well, Damon, you, I, I, you're right. We ran into each other at the park. I just can't compliment you enough for how friendly you were with the folks around you. You were really clearly having a good time representing the city really well, so thank you. In, in that north section of the park, mm -hmm. uh, by the time the eclipse came, I think I would met probably 500 new friends from all around the world. So it was uh, my pleasure to do so, and they all enjoyed the city. Great. On Sunday night, I took a group of about 20 on a walk over the new bridge over to the uh, Minto Brown Park and they just enjoyed that and we saw the sunset out there so it was a wonderful experience so on behalf of uh, all of them thank you to the city the council the mayor and everyone for being so welcoming to our guests thank you very much Damon uh, James Hill hi my name is James Hill I've got some pictures here uh, Ward. for Chris. I live on Fisher Road. My wife has lived there for 42 years. And this is some of the carnage we had the Saturday before. Car had to be going 60, 70 miles an hour Ooh. down Fisher Road, cross over the lane, went full length the ivy, tore it up. Five days later, this young lady March 16th was hit getting her mail out of the mailbox and basically killed right there in the driveway. And it's, this, this fish road just became a speedway. I, I watch cars go by, passing other cars. I've had people pass me pulling in the driveway, even with the signals on. Something needs to be done to slow this traffic down on this. And, it's not the fault of the police. The police have been out there a lot, and there, there needs to be stop signs or something put up in, in the middle or speed bumps, or I, I'd even go for red light speed cameras, let these people pay for what's going on down this road. But there's no sidewalks, there's a large drainage ditch on the side, and there's a lot of pit people walking up down that street. There's a lot of kids walk to school this this thing has just got to be crazy and we're getting a lot of trucks from Walmart and the other food store down there uh, it, it's basically become a bypass and a speedway um, a lot of times I've seen cars go 60 70 miles an hour down through there and it's just a racetrack so any ideas we can come up with would be appreciated and uh, it's just too bad my wife lost her life out, out there on this getting the mail out of the mailbox well mr. Hill thank you thank you very much for coming down um, have you talked with our public works department at all have you had a chance to talk with them No, not yet well mr. manager I, I I'd really like to have a kind of a route some sort of discussion in the future on this. I think Fisher Road is a tremendous problem. It's a bypass to get off of Lancaster. I think all of us who live up in that general vicinity know exactly what Mr. Hill is talking about. So, Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and Mr. Hill, thank you for coming down <coughs> and, and, and speaking to us. Um, you know, I sat at your dining room table with you and your wife just a few weeks before this uh, horrible event and uh, talked about the problems with Fisher Road and listened to your concerns. And I want you to know that I have not forgotten that conversation. I never will forget that conversation. And I've talked to the staff. I've talked to Mr. Fernandez, the public works director. I've talked to Chief Moore. I have to tell you, recently, or it's been maybe two months ago, I asked the chief to do whatever he could to help with the speed on Fisher Road. And the next day, he had the reader board out there. He had officers out there patrolling. And they've been out there. Every time I go down Fisher Road, 
I have seen either uh, the reader, the, the speed reader board, and, or one of the chief's officers down there, and, and they're making a dent, but it's certainly there's a lot more to be done. And um, I've asked the public works director to come up with some ways to, to, fix, to make the situation better. I, I like the idea of a stop sign maybe on, at Devonshire or one of, yeah. the, one of the, something to disrupt that traffic because you're, exact, you're exactly right. It is, it's becoming uh, a, a huge problem and it's just a tragedy that your wife lost her life on that road and I, right in front of your house. And I, I, there are no words that I can say. I, I completely understand that, and um, I completely understand that, and I want you to know I'm working hard to try to make that situation better, and, and the staff is as well. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, Councillor Anderson. Uh, Mr. Hill, I want to say I'm terribly sorry for your loss, and this, uh, I echo what Councillor Hoy said, but I've been talking about this now for almost my entire time on the council, there are just far, far too many pedestrian deaths in this city. And some of it is design. Um, and, you know, we just got the problem here, no sidewalks. Um, there's nothing on that street and many other streets to indicate that the cars should go slower. So they go faster and they go faster and they go faster. And, you know, that's a design flaw in how we build streets. And we need to, to protect against all these tragedies that are totally um, uncalled for and useless and uh, a real shame. So I hope we can do something. Yeah. Yeah, the 25, uh, 25 mile an hour speed limit sign just doesn't seem to be taking, does it, huh? Yeah. We'll get. Uh, Jan Kaiditz? Yeah. Was it all good? <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Jan Kaidas and I we don't live too far from Jim and we're on Coral in June and we have had cars going 67 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. But I'm bringing up a couple issues um, uh, having no parking or no camping signs. The um, street between June and the Lancaster Commons, it's too narrow. They pass on that street. When people are tipped off and they don't wanna be slowed down, they pass on that street. I can't believe there hasn't been an awful accident or somebody's been killed, and there's children there. Mm -hmm. And that really makes me nervous and stuff. So when they have too many cars parked on the side, and they want to go four, and there, there's a room for four. <laughs> they do, they pass, they go in and out, and it's scary. We've watched a lot of things, and, what, and how nothing bad has happened, I'll never know. But we, you know, when then there's vehicles there for days. I mean, people are living in them. Where are these people going to the restroom? There are no restrooms there, none, parking alongside the street, and they're living in their, their rigs. We're, I know I am, I don't even like going out anymore and stuff. I am nervous. You don't know what these people have anymore, if they have a gun, if they have a knife. It's just not safe. It just isn't. And they're up all night long. Our neighbors across the street said well, she couldn't sleep very well. She's had back issues. Oh, two, three o'clock in the morning, people that were parked on the street there went into our yard to use the restroom more than once. We just need, we would love to see something like no parking, no camping signs. And uh, we've called code enforcement many times, the police many times. I think dispatcher knows us, <laughs> to be truthful about it. But, you know, we're concerned. I don't want anything bad to happen. I don't know what these people are gonna do. I don't, and I don't want to know. So if you could please see what we can do, let's talk. See what can be done. Thank you. Uh, Jan, before you leave, which, now they're on, are they on Coral or June Street? We are, these folks? are right on the corner of Coral and June. Where are the, where Coral are the campers parking park? Is, uh, Coral is where they're doing all the parking, down Coral. Just sort of coming off Lancaster on Coral and just yeah. pulling well, in and parking? Yeah, people okay. avoid Lancaster and yeah. they come here several years ago now. This has been several, four or five, maybe. Five. 2,500 cars a day, 
2,500. I know it's increased that. I know it has. And it's, it's a concern and it's scary. And okay. we would love to have something done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. down. Gary. Kaiditz. <laughs> I'm pretty good with Gary here. A lot of this is kind of going to be more of what Gary, could just, you introduce yourself with your oh, mind? My name's Gary Kaiditz. Thank you. Uh, I live on June and Coral, and she was talking about all the camping and people using restrooms and all that stuff. Where we live, it's a one block stretch on the side of my house that the street is super narrow and it's never been widened out. Then it widens out to four lane or four widths wide. Yeah. Well, when you get a semi parked alongside my house and you get a school bus going this way and a school bus going this way, they're about tearing each other's mirrors off. Yeah. One time I was outside and the guy's mirror gets ripped off his car that was parked there. So I got the license number of the car, went in the apartment complex, tried to find the car, and I think he just went in and went through and went out. So I picked the mirror up off the street, go to put it on the car that it got tore off of. There's a guy sleeping in it. He doesn't even know his mirror is tore off his car. I think he was either on drugs or they use drugs a lot there. Syringes all over the place. I mean, something, it needs, I've talked to Nelson Morales, which is a code enforcement officer. The house behind me burned last November 9th. Grass is four feet tall. Try to get people out there. I've had police officers and nothing they can do. They say they can't go in the house because it's trespassing if they go in. Uh, there's bums back there going through the garbage in the backyards. I, the best I've got done so far is I talked to a Marion County code enforcement lady. Her name was Lori. She gave me more information. I've talked to the governor's office. I've talked to, I get to run around to everybody. It would be nice to talk to somebody and get something done. Introduce yourself, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, city councilors. My name's Brady Rogers. I am your Neighborhood Enhancement Division Administrator. I don't know the address or this particular property off the top of my head, but I can... 2275. Okay, I'll make a note of that. I'll find out everything there is to know about it, and I'll be speaking with you tomorrow. Sounds good. I appreciate okay. it. Great. Thank, Thank you for coming you. down. Thank you for your time. Nick Williams. Mayor, City Councilors, it's an honor to be here this evening. My name is Nick Williams. I'm a resident of Ward 8 and uh, Chief Executive Officer at the Salem Area Chamber of Commerce, which is in Ward 1. And I'm here for the air conditioning. <laughs> so uh, a couple of kudos. First of all, on the event, uh, the Eclipse event, <clears throat> very well done. That's been well documented this evening. Um, I, a lot of, it was just a lot smoother than I think a lot of folks thought it would go. So. So kudos to staff and, and uh, counselors for the leadership on that. Um, I'm going to suggest a resolution uh, that states that we should have an eclipse every year. Uh, it, was, it was great for our member businesses or the majority of them. And so I, I highly recommend that. So I look forward to the staff report. <laughs> In addition to that, uh, the announcement on, on the Amazon move today is a testament to a number of different things. First, the foresight. Uh, to develop the Mill Creek Corporate Center. And in addition to that, a, a company like Amazon doesn't come to a city like Salem just for tax incentives or the right piece of real estate. They're taking a close look at Salem's livability as well. And a lot of the strides that we've made in the last handful of years uh, led to Amazon's uh, placement within Salem, I believe, just as much as, as uh, any financial advantages that we may have proposed. So well done. Keep up the good work. Um, on the topic of livability, with the additional 1,000 jobs that are going to be coming to Salem, uh, every time I see or hear a big number like that, I think about the, uh, the, the ability that we have to receive those people and their ability to move effectively from point A to point B. And where I'm going is the bridge. Uh, it's absolutely critical that we continue the planning for uh, the additional Salem River crossing. 
And uh, I suggest that we adhere to the strategic plan that states that we, we're going to put this out for a poll. We do need to know what the residents of Salem truly feel about this. And I think that, uh, I think that some polling would really open our eyes to that. Uh, in addition, I'd like to make you aware of our September 11th forum. Um, Chief Moore is going to be speaking at the forum lunch on September 11th. That's going to be at the Salem Convention Center at noon. So I encourage you to come. Uh, he, just, he just informed me he's going to be playing the jazz flute, which I really look forward to. Um, so, uh, but this is going to be, we're going to be honoring our public servants and, and talking about uh, the, what we've learned as a community since September 11th. Finally, uh, kudos to Lisa Anderson Ogilvie. One of our members had an issue uh, getting a sign up. And through a couple of emails, we were able to get to the bottom of the issue. And uh, the sign was, is, is in process right now after about eight months of work. So thank you, Lisa. With that, thank you for your service. And I think I've talked enough. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, Nancy Baker Croft. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, I'm Nan Baker Croft from Ward 1. Thank you, Kara, for representing us so well. I um, want to thank you for the uh, opportunity to be here with NAMI. That was like very exciting. My son came down with bipolar five years ago, and that's affected my life very seriously. I didn't know much about mental health issues or NAMI, but I do now. And all the support people who are family members of those who are ill and those who are ill can get is great. Also, I wanted to thank the um, the council for listening to my email today. I hope you've all had a chance to read it. I have been very busy in my yard because code enforcement has not been um, looking at June Street. They've been looking at my backyard and whether my wood was stacked properly and cut to the right length. I have had a very serious, difficult time for the last month living up to the expectations of code enforcement. And why did they come in my yard? They came because they thought I had chickens. I thought this issue was resolved. There's only one council person that's here, I believe, that was still here when Salem legalized chickens. And it's still not done, because two years ago when the, um, the law was changed that there would no longer be a requirement for a license, I thought it was moving on. Salem is joining other cities in this state that aren't making it a big deal. And yet, this May, on Mother's Day, my son persuaded me to get chicks. Our three girls, Honey and Willa, for Willa Kather and Cordelia, are very uh, sad that they had to be displaced. They are, they are presently in foster care in the Northeast neighborhood. I will not give a location. They're happy. But we miss them very much. And I do not believe that any city should have a rule, a law, an ordinance that affects one individual differently than any other individuals. Especially because I believe I'm the person who worked very hard for a very long time to end chicken discrimination in the first place. And it's also to me a city election issue. I don't elect my administrators, I elect my council members, and I don't believe rules should be made in the hands of only administrators. Thank you very much, council and mayor. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you. That's the last person signed up for public comment. Is there anyone else who wanted to address council? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Consent calendar, Councilor McCoy. I move approval of the consent calendar with the following polls, 3.3E by Councillor Hoy and 3.3F by Mayor Bennett. Not a second. Okay. Okay, Councillor Kayser seconded, I think. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. That's great. We heard her. <laughs> Okay. I think the recorder did too. Now go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so the, the consent calendar contains the following things that we have the minutes of the August 14th. 
council meeting. Uh, 3.3A is an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon, Depart Oregon Department of Corrections uh, to allow for the installation, operation, and maintenance of city radio system equipment at the DOC communication facility for our new 800 megahertz radio system project. Uh, 3.3B is also a lease agreement with Day Wireless Systems, again, to allow for the installation, operation, maintenance of city radio equipment at Day Wireless Systems communication. So as you can tell, we have uh, we are upgrading our uh, a radio communication system for the police, fire, and all those folks that are dependent on that here uh, in the city, in the area, and this is the steps to make sure we can implement that as we get ready for, as, and it's being designed. 3.3C is a uh, Chemeca to Parkade retail le lease with Rudy Steakhouse, and we had an earlier lease uh, for a portion of, uh, of the old uh, McGrath's restaurant location earlier this year and this is uh, to uh, lease another 1,700 or so square feet for a, sort of a banquet area uh, in that area so that's that's it's an add to the lease I guess or an additional lease and that is what consists of the uh, oh and then we've got 3.3 D United we've got uh, authorizing the city manager to apply for and if awarded execute all documents including the attached intergovernmental agreement with Marion County associated with the U.S. Department of Justice Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $87,767 for federal fiscal year 2017. We, uh, because of some requirements by the federals, the feds, we, uh, we apply for that jointly with Marion County and if, in, if uh, we receive it, 10,000 or so goes to Marion County, 77,000 comes to us, and we use that money for the Community Service Officer Program. And that, Mr. Mayor, is the consent. Very good. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Come. Okay. And we have a public hearing tonight, which is for deliberations only, correct? Yes. Okay. So we are going to uh, be moving forward on amendments to the sign code. Councilor McCoy, I need a motion. I do need a recommended uh, staff. Move staff recommendation. Second. Second by Lewis. <laughs> You're on again. I'm on again. Um, not sure how we approach it. It's deliberation, so we're just talking about the issue here. Is that what we're doing here? Um, we're going to move this thing tonight, I think. Yeah, I think we are. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's important. I read and hashed and battled with this sign code, and it is it's hard to read. It's dense, and it's complicated, and it's got all kinds of moving parts. And, and I, as I looked at it, I, I was going, man, if I, I'm, I'm having a heck of a time here, and I've spent a lot of time a couple times through it and was still not sure about what I was reading. And uh, uh, so I called uh, with some emails back and forth with the city attorney, and he was kind enough to call me, and we had a conversation. Um, and I won't put words in his mouth, but I was saying, I think this thing is so complicated, maybe we need a rewrite. And his response is, well, we've got a state-of-the-art ordinance or sign code here. Uh, the previous city attorney with some other folks did a model draft and developed a model sort of city uh, sign code, which is what we've got in place. So. Um, as we struggle with this, I would tell the fellow counselors I learned that this is a model sign code, and if you go other places, they're probably not as concise and precise as this one is. So uh, uh, and as you think about what you do or don't want to do, put that in mind because it, it, you know, at that point sort of caused me to go, huh, if that being the case, um, I'm not sure what amendments would be appropriate if we've got a model sign code according to what's going on right now. Um, if you want to add something to that, because since I'm speaking for you, uh, Dan, go ahead. But uh, I would just tell you that, to me, um, we just got a very complicated issue. Has all kinds of things to do, not only with uh, you know uh, rights of uh, free speech rights and fa fa what happens with a sign and the sign industry, how they in deal with it in, in and back and forth, uh, all the different requirements needed in a city our size, and it's just a complicated issue and manner. Um, so. Just wanted to bring that up as we, we deliberate with us. Thank you very much. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, 
Thank you. I'd like to make a substitute motion that we postpone deliberation on the sign code and have a city council work session. Second. Second yeah. by Kayser. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead now. Counselor. Thanks. Um, I think Councillor McCoy uh, sort of touched on the subject where he said this is an extremely complicated situation. We haven't had a work session. Um, we had the meeting two weeks ago, and in between that was the, uh, a long holiday with the eclipse and everything else. I have some questions about the commercial versus private issue. I have some questions about uh, enforcement, and I understand that enforcement is one thing. We can have whatever code we want. We still have to have it enforced, and that may be more of a budgetary matter than it is a sign code matter. But um, I was, you know, disturbed by uh, the fact that we have this um, uh, fine available and we, uh, for $250, and we've never yet collected one f f uh, a fine from that where we can see signs all over the place. Um, so uh, I'm also interested with the... Uh, issue of the LED signs or the, excuse me, the lighted signs, the neon signs and how quickly they turn over or don't turn over. I'd like a better explanation of that. Um, I'm also uh, interested with some other signs and I don't know what you call them, but I think they're called the wing-like, almost flag-like signs, how those are dealt with. And I just think um, it may be a model code and I don't doubt that it is because we've got a good uh, city attorney staff and the prior city attorney staff was good and uh, but I personally would just like to know more about this uh, before I vote on it. Councilor Kayser. Thank you. Uh, I agree. I think uh, I, I think we shouldn't shy away from a work session for something as complicated as this. I've received a lot of questions about this through neighborhood associations and talking with folks. I know we, I think the council's received a lot of emails, at least I have personally, mm -hmm. about it. Um, and I think it's just, it, it's a pretty, it's a fairly significant change. It's a complex issue. There's a lot of um, interest in it. And I think, um, I think a work session would be good so that we fully understand what we're voting on into. Councilor McCoy's, um, you know, the, the model ordinance, that's great. I want to understand it better first um, before we actually deliberate on it. I'm going to just make a, a brief comment. I have no problem going to a work session. We can take all year doing this, but I'll tell you, uh, you knew you had two weeks. Not one person followed up uh, during the two weeks to work on amendments, to talk with anyone about this issue. So I, I would hope if you want two more weeks or eight more weeks, you'll, you'll actually put your nose to the grindstone and do some work on it instead of letting it float and then come in and tell us you need two more weeks or another month. Councilor? I'd just like to respond to that. Um, the, the two weeks were punctuated by a, a celestial event that will never happen again in our lifetime. There was, um, we're volunteer counselors. Many of us hold full-time jobs. We work 40 hours or more a week. Um, sometimes there's just not enough time in between our council meetings to talk with staff and especially when other important events are happening in the city um, and especially during the summer. So um, I appreciate the comments about getting together with staff but sometimes as a volunteer council we just need a, a bit more time and I, and I think a work session could provide that. Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I also work 40 hour plus weeks and uh, I, I tell you what, this stuff is, it does take time and it does take attention. And I think when you ask for delays like we gave you last time, you have some responsibility stuff. I even sent out an email saying, where's the amendments? Because that's what we were waiting for was the amendments so we could actually have a discussion tonight. So I don't mean to be kind of uh, nannyish about it, but maybe this time folks will kind of step up and do the work. Councilor Lewis. Um, I have a procedural question. Uh, if we go to a work session, does that finalize this public hearing or, or after the work session do we come back and do deliberations? Thank you, Councillor. Um, <laughs> it's correct. Basically the work session would just be part of council deliberations. Okay, then I'm going to make a, a, 
ask for a friendly amendment to the motion. Um, I think after the work of the work session that um, the, the ordinance should go back out to the public. It, it's um, the testimony we've heard from the public uh, and the ideas of the changes that have been talked about changed the ordinance substantially and I believe that it should be opened back up for especially businesses who, uh, who their livelihood depends on signs. Um, should be uh, re-engaged or, or engaged in the first place. And, um, and I'll stop there because the motion supposed to be small. Councilor Nagy. Yeah, we don't know if the work session is actually going to cause any changes to happen and we can make that level of a decision at a work session to, to send it back out or reopen for public testimony or, or whatever it might be best just to wait and see what the results are of our impression of the, uh, the work session. Councillor Anderson. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Nanke and I appreciate what the mayor said about basically we need to get moving on this and, I, and that's why I would think that I would not accept the friendly amendment to my motion and I, uh, because we may not make any changes or we may make some minor changes and we've had plenty of testimony, I think, to know what the issues are. Councilor Nate. If I can do one last one, yeah. Sign code has been one of those things that's been evolving uh, significantly over the last uh, 17 years that I've seen it and I know there were a lot of issues on the upfront uh, and it has been a uh, updated and it, it's gotten better I, I it is complicated and it is one of the things that council should understand because we get questions about it a lot especially when you get the visual pollution that pops up Friday at five o'clock uh, in the middle of the medians as you're driving down the street as well and so uh, I think it'd be good just to bring everybody up to speed a little bit more on on the code and then we can figure out what we want to do Councilor McCoy uh, I have no problems with this. It's, if the, that's what the uh, majority of the council wants, it's fine with me. There's nothing wrong with talking something out and figuring it out and making sure we make the right decision. But if we're going to do that, I would like uh, staff uh, to be prepared to explain to us exactly on what seemed to me the prime issue, which was uh, you know the signs in the temporary signs in the right of way, what it is we're going to do moving forward to enforce that. If we're going to have a side ordinance and, and it's going to be on the books and we're not going to do anything to enforce it, my question is why have, why have the ordinance if we're not going to enforce it and require it to be met? And that's not happening. There's issues why, and I understand the issues, but we need to address that and how we're going to move forward to do that one way or the other. So I think that's something that I'll be looking to talk, discuss in any work session we have moving forward. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, Regard, regardless uh, of, of, of the outcome of this of this motion, uh, staff will be proceeding with the enforcement actions that were outlined for you in, in the in the staff report uh, this evening. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. We have a substitute motion. Would you restate it, Councillor? I move we postpone deliberation on the sign code until we can have a work session of, uh, on the, the issue of the sign code. And I would add that I would like to see if we could have this work session as soon as the staff can possibly arrange it. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Okay. Special orders of business. Councilor Hoy. Move staff recommendation. Okay. Second by Nike. I actually had this one pulled. This is on the the, the street light upgrade, and I or the uh, yeah the street light upgrade. And I actually had this pulled because I had questions. Are we are we talking? We're talking about the uh, three point three e. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Signalized intersection. Right, right, right. So I had I had questions, and actually those questions were answered just as I sat down tonight. So, oh. Okay. Uh, I. I just was curious what we meant when we said upgrade, and I, I understand that from staff that we're going to be upgrading several intersections to allow for a flashing yellow left, or a flashing yellow uh, arrow 
which will uh, aid in traffic flow and pedestrian safety and all sorts of things. So I was uh, very pleased to hear that from staff. And so th that's the only reason I, I pulled it because I was curious what specifically we meant by those upgrades. Okay. So, Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. 3.3F, I'll move the staff recommendation. Second. Second by Hoy. Um, this is a project uh, a number has been working on for some time. I'm really pleased to see this coming forward. This is the agreement with Salem on Ice LLC to place a temporary uh, ice rink facility in Riverfront Park during November and January of 1718. Uh, I, I think this is going to be one of those additional draws into the downtown park during a period when it tends to be uh, very quiet down there. Uh, I do have a couple of questions I want to ask. Um, I think this, uh, I, I do hope everyone will support this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, number one, and I don't know who to address these to. Lisa, okay. Is it covered? Good evening, Alicia Blaylock, Public Works Administration Division Manager. And I would note that Troy Aker is also here from Salem on Ice, so he can answer questions as well. Okay. But yes, it will be covered. It will be covered. Uh, are we uh, satisfied with the insurance arrangement? I had an email regarding the insurance and deductibles, and uh, I believe it's that email has been reviewed. I wanted to just make sure we're all. Dan is going to answer that. Um, yeah, uh, Marcus uh, Pitts and I, the risk manager, and I both took a look at this section. We felt that the existing language was adequate. It's pretty standard form language, but we did. I did go in since we were making uh, a few changes here and, and modified it slightly just to make it clear that uh, the risk manager does have the ability to approve the actual policy uh, for the provider. So uh, the staff is satisfied with it. Okay. Uh, where is this going to be located in the park? It's near the Court Street entrance, just south of the pavilion. There's kind of a rise, a berm in the grassy area in the South Meadow, and it would be in that area. So will it be like a skating hill, kind of? <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to flatten that thing? Well, um, that was another change to the agreement today. Um, we're going to allow the um, proposer uh, to flatten the area to install some what, what temporary fill. It's not on the berm, though. It's in a, an existing relatively flat area. Yes, it is. it is on a relatively, yes. OK, it's not on the little bump, OK? Anyone else have questions on this, Councillor Anderson? Thank you. Um, I, I'm curious about the restroom issue and the portable toilets, be, because uh, where it is, and thank you for telling me. I, I wanted to know where it is in relation to the pavilion, and now I understand that I could see the map, but it still didn't show the pavilion. So the only available restrooms are going to be down by the carousel, the only permanent restrooms? Correct. We don't have permanent restrooms okay. closer. And uh, do you or... Um, Mr. Aker, do you uh, 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 see that as a problem? Are we going to have a lot? Uh, you know, it seems to me like if you're down there with kids who are skating and they're on skates, it's going to be pretty hard to get them all the way down to the uh, uh, the, the permanent restrooms by the carousel. So I, I suspect that there's pretty much going to be permanent uh, porta potties there. Well, temporary porta potties. Temporary right. permanent right. porta -port yeah. Then the other question, um, the other question I had concerned the Greenway. There were some, uh, and um, it's on page two of the report. Um, uh, there was something about uh, staff has evaluated the, the proposal and Willamette River Greenway requirements. Uh, you, uh, does, what's the evaluation? You just well, one of the restrictions was no um, exterior lighting and okay. no red and green lighting, that kind of thing. And, and so, so in the body of the report where you say no lighting aimed toward the river, no red and green, that was part of the Greenway evaluation. Correct. Then, um, as I read this agreement, the the fees to the city are the permit fee and then the $52 per month to carry out the facility there during the time. Correct. Okay. Um, 
then I, 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 uh, um, I, I guess this is for the city attorney. I tried to look quickly through the changes when you had the additions uh, tonight, and the change was in uh, where you and Marcus worked out the insurance language. Was that the only change? No, or if, other if, if I may, Dan, the, se the second change was in, in the uh, uh, first draft that was provided to council and the public. Uh, there was a, a statement, a requirement that the city would in install a sand cap. Right, right, and that's gone. We have removed that. Uh, the estimate for that cap came in higher than we had expected. We, we, we spoke with uh, Mr. Acker, and, and he, he's in agreement with that removal. It's something we'll evaluate after the first season. Perfect, perfect. Finally, just one comment, Mr. Mayor, and that is I was kind of amused by uh, the statement that City of Salem is going to be better with the ice rink than Modesto because we know what winters are like. And as somebody <laughs> who grew up in Chicago and the city manager coming from Ann Arbor in the northern, uh, northern uh, upper peninsula of Michigan, nobody in Salem no really knows what winters are like. <laughs> thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cook. Um, thank you. I just had a question for you, Alicia. So there's no, I, I believe the last time we had talked with someone in Public Works, there's no uh, permanent restroom in the northern part of Riverfront Park as yet in a master plan for for the the park at this point is that correct we're still just going to be relying on the porta potties Sorry. it's in the current master plan I think Mark Bechtel oh. would like to speak to that. okay thank you yes Mark Mark Bechtel public works operations manager uh, the current the currently adopted master plan for Riverfront Park does show permanent restrooms eventually being constructed uh, kind of due east of the pavilion on the other side of the walkway. Um, on the other side of the walkway. Yes, yeah, so between, between the railroad and the pavilion and the walkway, there's a, an area where you could put a restroom building. Uh, it's just been part of a phase of the park that's never been funded. Okay. Um, and um, if I may, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something uh, that has a price tag for funding amounts, especially if we're going to be using the ice rink as a way to, what am I saying? I'm saying um, in the same way that the bridge, uh, the new Minto Bridge was worked on uh, with support from the community, uh, is this something that Public Works would be wanting to get support for for the restroom. I feel like we're already kind of coming behind, even without the ice rink, as a, someone with little kids. It, you do not have use of a park if you don't have a restroom once you pass the diaper age, and especially getting out of it. So um, there's only right now the two by the carousel, mm -hmm. and so it really restricts your movement. So sooner rather than later. I mean, is it on a timetable? Is it something that I would like to learn more about that restroom. Sure, just the, uh, the, the future of that restroom has always been tied to funding. And, uh, and you're absolutely right, Councillor, uh, for a park that size, it, it's desperately short of permanent restrooms, uh, which is why you saw 50 porta potties there for the concerts over the weekend and, and everything involving the eclipse. Uh, it's just never been a part of the park that's been funded. Uh, and there's certainly different funding options available, but it's expensive. Uh, a, a permanent restroom structure like that would cost, depending on how far we have to go for connections, anywhere from 150 to $250,000. And that, that is probably the primary reason why it has not been built. But uh, as we move into uh, an update of the master plan for Riverfront Park, uh, I'm sure that will be front and center in, in consideration. Thank you. I appreciate it. Councilor Kayser. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question, I think for Mr. Raker, maybe. Um, I've been asked quite a bit, what's kind of a ballpark figure in terms of the cost to use this uh, ice skating rink? For admission? <coughs> yes. Uh, is that for admission? Yeah, like if I wanted to take, you know, my family down there, like how much, how much could I expect to pay for? Yeah, uh, right now we were thinking $12 for children, $15 for adults, and then we'll obviously put together some kind of family pack um, to try to dr uh, draw the price down a little. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Is that per hour? How how long is how long is twelve dollars going to buy me my kid on the? Yes. <laughs> uh, the sessions are um, going to be ninety minutes. Ah, okay. So uh, when I when we first came up with the time frame, I thought ninety minutes that doesn't seem very long, until you put on ice skates. Ice skates. <laughs> <laughs> it's about forty five minutes, and you're 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 going to the snack shop. Will you be whatever. renting ice skates as well? And they'll ask, that 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 price includes the ice skate rental. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so great. I, I think the, the the price range I thought was uh, fair, and I think it was uh, yeah um, reasonable. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. We have information reports. Who wants to run through them? We've got an information report on the Rotary Amphitheater. Did you guys want to talk about it at all? Well, why don't, come on up and we'll see if we have any questions. Well, good evening. I'm Barry Nelson from Ward 7 and uh, happy to be co-chair of the Rotary Amphitheater Project along with Ken Van Ostal. And so wanted to submit an update to you this evening uh, to share with you our progress to date and where we are. So any questions? Nope. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Come back again. We will develop questions, I'm sure. <laughs> We'll have a work session and see what we can come up with. Um, and we have a second reading of ordinances. Mr. Ordinance Mr. number. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I have a question or two about 6C. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Right um, that's the uh, the zoning changes uh, to, uh, the, at the North Campus, which is in my ward, State Hospital. And I guess that would be for Ms. Anderson Ogilvy. Um, all this is doing is, is, is separating up into the parcels, the five parcels. Uh, this has nothing to do with zoning. All that's going to come later, correct? Correct. Then um, I'm looking at parcel number three. I think it's three. It's the, it's the parking between the park that we're going to have and um, the uh, Yaquina Hall and the dome building. Um, that is, is that going to be in any way connected uh, um, with the parking for the affordable housing in Yaquina Hall or the potential parking for the use of the sports field? Or is that yet to be determined? Um, I think that's yet to be determined. I don't think the city is buying lot three, but I believe there's an option to lease the parking if needed. Okay. Um, Then uh, this is on condition three on page two, which talks about uh, what's going to happen if there's certain uh, daily trips uh, in exceed 2380 average and what's going to happen to D Street. Do you have any idea what the daily trips are now? So in other words, how much of an increase would there have to be before something happens? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what the daily trips are now. I'm sure someone in Public Works knows okay, that, I, but I don't know that. Yes, um, um, I, I'd like to know that at some point. That'd be, that would be helpful. Sure. Um, other than that, I think this is a good way to split things up, and, and I know this will be coming back to us in the future for a lot more closer discussion of the various issues. So uh, I'm glad we're moving forward on this. Great, thank you. Now we'll go to second readings. Ordinance number 2017 relating to a change to the Salem Area Comprehensive Plan Map Designation and Neighborhood Plan Map Designation for 2425 Strong Road Southeast, 3991 and 3993 Fairview Industrial Drive Southeast and 4080 Reed Road Southeast. Councilor Cook? Aye. Councilor Lewis? Aye. Councilor Kayser? Aye. Councilor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Nakey? Aye. Councillor McCoy? Aye. Councillor Osick? Aye. 
Councillor Hoy? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? Aye. Our passes. And I, is there anyone else that want? Is there anyone else that wanted to uh, make public comment? This is our last chance. Okay, then we are adjourned.